Now, if you have a really distracted dog and a dog that you know really needs better focus, the next couple tips that I'm gonna share with you could probably be the most helpful things in this entire video. I'm Kale McCann, this is Euchre. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. This episode is brought to you by Yukonuba. The time of day in which you train or choose to work with your puppy can really affect their focus. Now, the most common suggestion that we make is to choose times of the day where your dog is naturally hungry. One of the best things to do, especially if you're working in your house when there's not a lot of distractions around, is to just use their breakfast or their dinner. Typically, dogs are really excited to get their breakfast and dinner, and it's a good opportunity to kind of bank on that natural excitement. However, that's not always the case, and that's something that we've actually learned with our uh, puppy, Euchre, here. She's actually not very motivated to work for her kibble in the morning. She's really not that hungry at all. So we have found that um, we have to be a little bit more strategic as to which time of day we do our training. Now remember, every puppy is different. So just because one thing works for Euchre doesn't necessarily mean you'll do the same thing with your puppy, but it is important to just sort of explore different times of day and when your dog is showing the most interest in food. Now for a long time, I would choose to do my training sessions where I wanted to use a lot of food a little bit later in the day or later in the evening where she was showing a little bit more natural drive for the food. Um, and so I could get away with just using kibble. If I wanted to get a little bit more focus on her at a time where she was as, wasn't as in interested, I would up the ante. So I would actually go to like some training treats that were a little bit more high value. So really think about the time of day and whether it's helping or hindering your dog's focus. Now there are all kinds of exercises that we wanna spend time working on with our puppy, but something you might not realize is that different styles of exercise, what you're training, on actually requires different amounts of focus from your puppy. So for example, if I'm working on something that requires a lot of brain focus, a lot of thoughtfulness, th things like, you know, some body awareness or trick training, obedience training, things like that, where she's got a problem solve, she's got, really got to think her way through. I might then move over to practicing, you know, on your bed. Again, it's another thoughtful, oh, that was very fast, good girl. Uh, it's a very thoughtful exercise where she's having to be calm and she's going to have to think about what she's doing. But if I continue to work on thoughtful exercise after thoughtful exercise, um, I might sort of start to lose focus and a little bit of drive. So, you know, you might not work on a whole bunch of stays and then a whole bunch of stationary exercises and then, you know, call it quits there. If you're gonna do walking, recalls, keep a variety of things going with your dog because that's going to actually enhance your dog's focus and keep them uh, attentive for a little bit longer. So if I've just worked on two short brainy exercises, I might switch it up a little bit just to keep her a little bit more focused and, and excited. Ready? Okay, get it. I might switch to something a bit more active like using the toy to work on a few things. Now, of course, I could still just do some obedience skills, but I'm just gonna do it in a bit of a different way. Sit. Yes, okay, get it, good girl. So I'm just switching up how I work on things to keep her more motivated, to keep her more focused because again, she's getting a variety of style of training, which just keeps things more interesting. It can be a really good idea to start with a couple stationary exercises to get a little bit more focus before doing things that are a little bit more challenging like walking on lead. So I'll just reward her for sitting and focusing a little bit first. Yes, good girl. And then we can set out to practice our let's go walking. Let's go girl, yes, good. Let's go, you, yay! Let's go, yes. Let's go, you, yay. Ready, let's go, let's go, yes, good girl. Let's go, good. Yes, let's go, yes, good girl. Here, sit. Yay. Now I talk a lot about the variety of exercises that you need to work on with your puppy. And a lot of people end up thinking they have to set aside, you know, an entire hour or two to do their dog training every single week. But really the best way to train a young puppy or a young dog is to work on your training exercises for short periods of time, many times throughout the day. And that's gonna increase your dog's focus. So you might even put a timer on yourself. You might set a timer for 10 minutes in the morning or get a quick little training session in when you're waiting for your teed it to be done or in between commercial breaks, you know, a few little bits here and there. Another thing that I'll sometimes do is I'll train until the treats in my hand are, are left. So if I have 15 treats in my hand, I will do 15 repetitions of whatever I'm doing and then boom, it's done. Because what's easy to do is overdo things because it's either going well or you want to kind of keep progressing on things and then you might end up, um, you know, ending on something that's not the best product. So keep things short and sweet, short periods of time throughout the day 
today is really going to be a far more effective way to teach your dog to train with a lot of focus and attention on you. Now, if you have a really distracted dog and a dog that you know really needs better focus, the next couple tips that I'm going to share with you could probably be the most helpful things in this entire video. We're going to talk a little bit about how to control your dog's resources or their sort of schedule in the home to increase focus and not teach them that life without you is actually more exciting. Now, Yoker's in her crate right now. And, um, you know, when I let her out, what I don't want to do is just let her run around the house and, and do her own thing. I want her to learn that when she comes out of the crate, we're going to do things together. Now, there's a couple things I'm going to do to make my life easier here. Number one is I've put all the other animals away. So it's just me here so that she can't really look at anything else. And I'm also going to close this baby gate so she can't just bomb out of the crate and run into the other room and, and have some fun. And the other thing I'm going to do is when she comes out of her crate, I'm going to engage with her. So I'm going to get some treats out first. Now, she absolutely loves these Yukonuba treats. And I know they're the sponsor of today's video, but I'm telling you, we have had so many issues with food and treat training with this dog not being motivated. And she loves these. So that's been super helpful. Now I have my leash on and before I let her out, I'm just going to work a little bit of control. Good girl. Yes. Good. Well done. Okay. Yay. Sit. Yes. Good girl. So rather than letting her come out and do her own thing, she comes out. Good girl. Okay. She comes out and I put the leash on right away. <laughs> Yes, good girl. Now, the reason why Yuker's putting herself back in the crate is I will be perfectly honest here. We have been working, okay, come on out. We have been working so much in our obedience training that there are times when we finish our obedience training and I go to put her back in the crate and she's like, no mom, I don't wanna go there. I wanna keep doing stuff. So in the recent weeks, I've been working a ton on building more value for going in her crate. And I'm very pleased to see that it's actually really helping. What a good girl. Okay, you can come on out. But when she does come out of her crate, I'm not just gonna forget about her. I'm gonna do stuff with her. We're gonna come out, we're gonna go for a walk, or we're gonna play Frisbee, or we're gonna do some training, or maybe we're gonna spend some time together in the kitchen. But, you know, I'm going to keep the, um, the situation controlled so that she has to stay with me and I'm more likely to get more, oh, hi, cutie. I'm more likely to get some focus. What I don't want my puppy to learn is that when she's out, she can earn reward by doing things on her own. You you know, if she decides that she can come out and, you know, rip the couch apart or chase the other dogs or jump up on the table and, you know, steal the family's dinner or whatever it might be, she learns that those are the ways that she seeks enjoyment that has nothing to do with me. That's going to really diminish the focus and the relationship that I have with my puppy. So we like to say when they're young like this, that it's quality over quantity. So basically when Euchre's not doing stuff with us or we're not actively engaging with her, she's in her crate for now. And eventually that will change as she gets gets more trained and she starts to make better choices in the house. But for now, one of the reasons why we have so much focus from her is because that's all she knows. That's all she does when she's out of her crate. It's all fun and games and then nighty night for a little while and then we just rinse, wash and repeat from there. Right girl? Yes. So really controlling those resources can enhance focus like you would never believe. When we talk about a puppy's focus or a dog's focus, one of the things that seems to be the most obvious thing to help them with this would be food, treats. It's a great resource. <laughs> oh, look, she just stayed there. Yes. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, come here, Dinkelheimer Schmidt, come here. Now, when we talk about increasing focus, one of the most common or obvious things that we could talk about would be food and treats. This is a great resource that we can use to help keep our dogs attentive. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as just putting your puppy's favorite treat in your bait pouch or, or pocket and then setting out to train. Um, often people have a, sort of a, an understanding that their puppy just loves this one treat. We actually see this happen in our classes and in our online classes a lot where people go out for a walk they take what they think is their puppy's favorite treat and about five minutes into the walk the dog's not interested in the food anymore and um, really what happens there is that when we take our dogs into different environments or around different distractions sometimes we have to keep the food a little bit more interesting so having a variety of treats in your bait bag in your bait bag or your pocket can help immensely so that you can switch to different treats you should also know which are a little bit more high value to your puppy maybe which ones are a little lower value so if you're in an environment where there's 
not as much going on, stick to the lower value things. And if a harder distraction comes by, or maybe it's a more challenging exercise, then you can switch to something a little bit more high value. Now, to give you an example of, you know, what I would do with Euchre, she's very picky when it comes to food. She needs very high value treats. Um, you know, if I go out for a walk, I can't take her kibble. That's just not persuasive enough. So I take a whole variety of things, um, including some of the high value treats. We have our Yukonuba treats, which she actually really, really loves. It's been a saving grace without, uh, with going out in the street with different cars and people that we pass by. But variety of treats that you can switch it up is going to be immensely helpful to get more focus with your pup. Now, before we go any further, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Yukonuba. Each Yukonuba formula features Active Advantage, an exclusive protein and nutrient power design that fuels your dog's body, mind, and energy. We create videos here on YouTube to help you get out and do more with your four-legged family member. And Yukonuba believes that with dogs, an active life is a healthy life. And we couldn't agree more. Come, yes, good girl, sit, yes. Click the link in the description below to find out which Yukonuba formula is right for your dog. Now that you have these great tips on how to increase your puppy's focus, check out this card right here. It's gonna give you some ideas on what you can focus on when you're training your puppy. If you'd like our professional instructors to answer your questions and give you daily feedback on your puppy's training, make sure you check out our Puppy Essentials online course. The link for that is in the description below. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Euchre. Happy training.